Welcome to Creativity Nuggets. And before I begin the episode today, I'd like to show you a little something from the past. This is a cardboard head I made, and it's pretty simple. Just four slabs of cardboard glued together. Jeez, it's been so long since I wore this. It must be filthy. So anyways, you put it on, and I guess you're supposed to be this character. Whoever he is, I didn't get that far. But the real interesting thing is his mouth. You can sort of move it to make him talk, but it doesn't really work so well. See, for starters, you ought to put your hand up there to even make it work. And, uh, you know, your face is in there too, so um, it can be pretty cramped. It's, it's just it's more than a little awkward. I guess I wasn't thinking things through. But on top of that, if you shine some light in here, or really see what's inside, the mouth directly lines up with my actual mouth. That brings me to the topic of the episode, which is puppetry. Yes, puppetry. The genius art of making inanimate things come to life in real time through your own machinations, mainly by invading their personal space with your hand. But I digress. And mainly, I just need a friend around here. I mean, do you think this basement doesn't get lonely? I mean, look at me. I could use the company. And that's exactly what I'm going to try and make today. Keyword try. So let's waste no time and get right into it. Oh, Daddy, are we all going to have some new friends? Oh, yes, son. Yes, we'll all have some new friends in no time. And that was a sample. Puppetry is a subject that I believe needs no introduction despite however little of an introduction I just gave it literally seconds ago. It would be pretty difficult to find anyone on the planet who isn't familiar with the concept, especially with the hold it has on children's media. But that means little for the episode at hand. Today we're not going over the actual techniques it takes to maneuver these characters. We're going to be making them, and I, for one, love making silly characters. Maybe these characters will go on to be loved in the heart of every child, but I doubt it. Because for as cute as puppet characters could be, there's an equal chance of them being absolutely terrifying. I hope my creations today fall in a nice middle ground. So let's get to some puppets you can make at home in order of their simplicity. First is one you've most likely had experience with back at home. This isn't my first time making one of these, and it probably isn't going to be the last. It's ridiculously simple. Just bust out a single sock some rudimentary craft materials, pom-poms, pipe cleaners, and a glue gun, and you're set to go. Wait, it's already done? That's all the footage I had? I didn't even tell the people what they're making! Anyways, sock puppets are so easy to make. I made so many as a kid, it made my parents lament at just how many socks I was wasting. Still, they're timeless fun. Moving on, finger puppets. For these, you'll need the aforementioned craft materials and the ability to sew, which is not an ability I often flaunt. I mean, I sewed these before. So we're moving up in complexity here. Before gluing on your googly eyes, you'll need to sew the two equal sized pieces of material together. You still with me? Yeah, okay. While sock puppets' range of maneuverability is only limited by how far you can mangle your hand, Finger puppets, despite being slightly harder to make, can only really go back and forth, side to side, and bob up and down. You know, the whole range of motion of your single finger. And I was being generous with the, with the descriptions there, because in reality, you can probably do even less movements. Finally, we have string puppets, what are ostensibly rag dolls suspended and controlled by strings. I'm not going to make a rag doll here, I've already filled my sewing quota for the day making those finger puppets, so the medium I'm choosing to work with here is popsicle sticks, if that is a medium. I'll also be using the hot glue, some pliers for cutting the sticks, some metal wire, a drawing compass for puncturing the sticks, and a fishing line for the eponymous string. You can't have a string puppet without that. 
The gist of making a popsicle stick guy boils down to this. You cut your sticks to length, you poke holes through the sticks with the sharp end of the compass. I just need one of the... You poke holes through the stick. This is actually way harder than it looks, so... I cut the footage till I got it. I didn't need to work. I'm sorry, it. okay. I'm sorry. Anyways, you thread the wire through the holes of the two sticks and tie it, and then you have yourself a limb. You do this, making the arms and the legs, and gluing them to the torso until you eventually have a full person. See, I made. Mean, look at him. He's a little guy. Then you poke some more holes and thread the fishing line through them, connecting them to the cross that controls the puppet. Is that complicated enough for you? You didn't think I could do it, huh? Alright, so we've done all these characters. I've shown you the ropes of puppetry, but I don't think this is exactly cutting it for me. What I've made so far don't really constitute friends in my eyes. See, what I'm looking to make today is a true friend. Someone I can talk to, bounce ideas off of, so I'm not just constantly agreeing with myself on everything. We're gonna have to go one step further in complexity, and there's still one more puppet I can make here. The Ventriloquist Dummy. These are full-sized puppets meant to imitate a real-life person, perfect for my situation, and usually the better half of a double comedy act. I can't do a double act with any of these clowns. This one is gonna be a full-fledged character, and leagues more complex than the previous puppets. I actually had to draw some diagrams for this one. This will end up being my friend in the basement, so no more half measures. All I got so far is a plan and three styrofoam heads, so... What a better place to start than here. Let's choose one. So, we got a man's head with all the features. Eyes, nose, mouth. It's got the good amount of weight you'd expect from only the highest quality styrofoam. I don't know why they expected me to pay $10 for this styrofoam head, but I did. Second is the featureless. There's not much to say about it. Its size is the smallest of the three, but has the least going on. As you can see, I've already made a few impressions on it, poking it, beating it up and such. Last is the lady's head, and she's a baby face. All would make for decent choices, but I think I need some time to dwell on it. And in the meantime, I have something cooler to show you. This. Isn't it beautiful? It's gotta be from a dentist's office or something, yet it is wound up in my possession. But obviously here it will be the mouth of the dummy. I've been waiting for an opportunity to use this truly bizarre piece, and this is it. The idea is that I'll hollow out the head that I choose and put this in, as well as the eyeballs and anything else that I could stick in there. The mouth conveniently has a hoop that's allowed me to easily attach it to this stick as you can see, as well as a little tab in the back, which gives me a pretty good idea of what I'll use to control it. After much off-screen deliberation, I've decided that more than anything I need my new friend to be a girl. So I'll choose the female head, and thus begins the process. Making the eyes was almost too easy for a first step. All I had to do was paint a couple of ping pong balls, but if I didn't record this and show it to you, my duty wouldn't be fulfilled, would it? The longest part of the process was literally just having the patience enough to wait for the paint to dry. I'm not kidding. Up next is what I deem to be the most difficult part of the project, making the mouth mechanism. First of all, I had to get all the parts I needed, and I know if any of you are following along at home trying to make your own ventriloquist dummies, you probably don't have any secondhand dentist equipment, but you'll be amazed by all the cool stuff that you do have lying around that you can repurpose. I found all the parts I need just around the house. I got some super glue, a key ring, I salvaged this spring from an old TV, and it just so turns out that these little wall hanger things fit perfectly around the tab at the back of the map. With these, I could pretty accurately replicate my blueprints. Now let's give it a shot pulling. I haven't even glued anything yet. And then, then I'm obviously gonna add this chain and these. And then this is the main crux of it. But I still had my doubts to if this would even work at all, so it was still really nerve-wracking to put into practice. 
If you're wondering why I'm putting these gloves on, it's because, well, I have crazy glued my fingers shut before, and it's not pretty. Pinky doesn't need protection as much as the others. I don't even need, this hand doesn't even need it as much. So this is the moment of truth right here, applying the super glue and attaching the little hanger thing just the right way so that it would, it would all work out. And in this moment, uh, the stress is like instantly relieved for me. It was really, really satisfying to have, the, have that pulled off. And the mouth seems to be working fine uh, with the simple analog technology. I doubt it will break anytime soon too, which is a great plus. We are going to be putting in the eyes and the mouth by removing the face with this knife, like carving a pumpkin. Take off the face. Next comes the sculpting of the head. This isn't my first time attempting to sculpt styrofoam, and let me say, it is not at all conducive to being sculpted. I brought along a bunch of tools to help do the job, a spoon, a couple knives, but your best bet is just going at it with your fingers. Just scraping, scraping, scraping. I hope you didn't cut your nails recently. It's really not precise at all, but it's still the best way to go about it. I got the initial cut fine with the big butcher's knife. Just a single lateral cut, severing the entire face portion. Easy. But everything after that, hollowing out the head, it was a chore. Soon enough, it was a snowstorm. That's the other big problem with styrofoam sculpting. It's a complete mess. Clogged up the vacuum. So I don't, don't even want to think about it right now. The sculpt ended up not going to plan in many ways. In retrospect, thinking I could stick the eyes in where I did and having them look normal, as well as being manipulatable by a couple pencils, was pretty foolish. That doesn't really look too natural, does it? In the end, it looked like the puppet had two gaping holes in its face, and eyes that had sunk back into the brain. Probably because that's what it was. However, I ended up sticking them into the front part of the face, and that seems to work just fine. The friction holds them, everything's good. As for the mouth, I guess I got what was coming to me for the fact I didn't use any measurements. I hate measuring things, give me a break. So the whole thing looks pretty awkward in there. This is what it looks like from the side. Uh, there's a there's a lot taken out. Oh boy, and I thought getting the mouth to move was the hardest part. No, this is. Well, now we've done all the hard parts and are moving on into the totally mundane. Yeah, this project's a little front loaded. The only steps left are to paper mache and paint the head. I haven't done paper mache since public school, and I gotta say it's pretty fun. It's a lot less complicated than I remember. I guess you could say that about everything I did back then. You just mix flour and water, cut up some paper, and slop the stuff on there. I even did a balloon for good measure it was so entertaining. But not entertaining enough for me to give up my full attention. When the task at hand just seems like busy work, I'd say it wouldn't hurt to put something on in the background. But don't lose focus, that's the key. Never lose focus! That TV show, that podcast, is not the task you had. You're paper mache a styrofoam head. Painting was simple as well, and uh, I don't really have much else to say about it. Going over the head with paint was about the same as going over it with paper mache, though I did have to employ some color mixing to get just the right skin tone. And lots of tone, including rosy cheeks and, you know, values. I think that's the word for it. And finally, we're finished. How about we do the grand reveal? La la la. La la la. La 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 la. Blah blah blah. It's finished. It's finished. He 
he's finally done. Yes, I said he. With a jawline like that, I just couldn't get away with calling my creation a girl. Sorry to my past self. It was almost kind of silly to think it would be anything else. That weird looking mouth just wouldn't fit in any other way. The Uncanny Valley kind of comes with the territory as well. Realistic mouth, cartoony puppet, you get it. Regardless, this thing is now my friend, and in a way, my son. And no amount of physical deformity will change that. All he needs now is a name. I'm thinking... Ignatius. Yes, this will be the start of a beautiful friendship. The basement is looking livelier already with him in it. I think the building process was relatively clean as well, with a shocking amount of things going almost exactly to plan. I should make plans more often. Even what didn't go to plan was very minor and easily rectified. I tend to think that things could always be worse, and all things considered, this guy is the best I could do. And I'm proud. And with that, thank you for watching. This brings us to another end of another episode. <laughs> I tried to steal my show. Frickin' imposter. Well, Skippy, it seems as though your construction has been a resounding success. I officially dub thee the first lady of creativity nuggets. Second to me, of course. Because I'm not the president. But Max. My name's Ignatius, and I'm bald, and you have a lady's skull. Yeah, but uh, that's the only part that didn't go well. We'll discuss all that later. What about me? I told you not to come out. You're ugly. Ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're so ugly, you're ugly, 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 you're so ugly, man. You're so ugly, that's your mouth, ugly, you're so ugly, ugly.